Welcome to the Mustard Seed Media video podcast. My name is Bob, and this is the podcast for Drupal web designers. Over here at Mustard Seed Media, we build uh, primarily church websites. Uh, churches are, in fact, many small communities of people all put together. And so the module that I'm going to demo today is something we use a lot to gather people online in groups. It's called the Organic Groups module. And this module, basically the point is to more or less create mini websites on your website uh, for a lot of your site visitors to uh, come to your website and gather and post related content to a specific gathering or group of people and to be able to interact in a, in a particular space. If you've used groups.drupal.org, that is organic groups. So you can have groups for all of these different types of get-togethers, whether they be meetups or uh, people interested in updating certain modules or anything else. The idea is to allow you to segment your content based on these groups on your website. So a lot of people ask me, what is organic groups? Why, why would I use it? Uh, so today I'm going to try and uh, uh, sort of just describe a little bit what organic groups is, how it works, and then show you how to go ahead and set it up. So the best way to think about organic groups, or the best way I figured out how to explain it, is that organic groups really is a system that gathers a group of nodes all together into one sort of box. You can think of it like a, like a box that holds a bunch of stuff that's related to each other. And so it's going to hold all of these nodes, whether they be events or podcasts or blogs or announcements or anything else, into this box that um, are easy to display in one place. And the reaction I usually get from Drupal people is, well, that just sounds like node relationships. Why don't I just create node relationships? And you could. The only difference is that uh, you're more or less reinventing the wheel at that point. Organic Groups gathers, it's a system that already gathers all of this stuff together uh, so you can easily use it. But it doesn't just gather nodes together. It does things like uh, subscriptions. So people can subscribe to certain groups and then be notified when new content's added. So it's got this notification element, almost like a newsletter kind of element to it uh, as well. So it's got all of these different functionalities built in that you can use. And uh, we're going to show you how to do it today. It's kind of an all-in-one system to allow you to post things into a content section on a website, have it all organized into that section, and then allow people to be members of that group. You can also do things like private groups and things like that. I'll show that real quickly today. And uh, so, so that's it. Let's, let's just dive right in and look at organic groups, how to set it up, and what it does. So here's the organic groups homepage. Uh, it's gone through lots of iterations over the years. You can see uh, they're on a, working on a 2.0 release right now. Uh, I recommend the 1.0 releases just to get going. But what I am going to show is the 2.0 release today. Uh, so that's organic groups. You're going to want a couple of different modules with this. So let's look at the modules that you're going to install. Everything you see under organic groups here is the stuff that comes with organic groups. I didn't download anything additional. So you've got the organic groups main module. You've got the access control module. I'm actually not going to show setting up access control today, but what this allows you to do is have private groups and private posts. A lot of people want to do that. Uh, you can sync in with uh, triggers and actions by using the actions module. Organic groups notifications is awesome because it's a sort of a one-click feature to get notifications, whether they be via email or anything else, to the members of the group when new content's added. You'll see that panels would be nice in uh, OG, except it's not out yet. It, it's not compatible. It's not working yet. So you can't really use that yet. And then, of course, views integration. You're going to want views installed and working to be able to use organic groups. So the other two things that I install immediately when I install organic groups are because of this piece right here, organic groups notifications. I want to be able to use this. I want people to be notified when the groups are updated. So I'm going to install notifications module, and that requires the messaging framework. So the messaging framework and notifications module, you can sort of think of them as one system that are working together, or two systems that are working together for one purpose, which is to send notifications when stuff's added to the group. Now, you'll install messaging, and then you'll also need to enable some kind of notification type. I'm just using simple mail here to be able to send uh, messages via uh, email. But you can also do uh, SMS, Twitter, a bunch of other different messaging types in this. Now, you're also going to want content notifications, uh, notifications, notifications light. It'll enable the, the stuff for you that you need when you go ahead and in, uh, enable the organic groups modules. Um, so that's all the modules that we're going to do today. Let's go ahead and set up some organic groups. First thing we're going to want to do once we enable these is to add a new content type. This is going to be your actual group homepage. So I'm just going to call mine group. 
And then what you're going to want to do is go under organic groups in your content type setup and choose that this is a group node. Now notice, or, or if, you, if you think about this, you'll notice that you can have more than one type of group node. So if you have different types of groups, you may want to have different types of group nodes here. So uh, you can have a single group node and that's what I'm going to enable. So this is saying that this type of content should function as a group node. Now let's talk about what that means for a minute. Uh, a group in Drupal usually has whatever the group description is, uh, a title, description, just like anything, uh, any other nodes on top of it, uh, sort of at the top of the, the group. And then underneath by default, it'll list all of the nodes that are shown in the group. I'm going to show you how to override that listing a little bit. Uh, in a minute to get it to be a little bit nicer, a little bit more fancy. But that's basically how groups work, is you'll have your, your top section or your group description, your group name, any other fields, CCK fields you want to put on here. That'll just stay at the top of your group, and then all of the content will tend to be at the bottom, and it'll update more like a blog. But this is telling it, hey, anything that organic groups does include in this node when it's created. Things like sidebar blocks that are, that are group nodes, node relations, stuff like that. So when we create this content type and we tell it it's a group node, it's telling it, treat this just like uh, a main group in organic groups. So the next thing that we want to do, it's all fine and dandy to have group nodes, but you want to be able to post content in those groups. So what you're going to want to do is edit different pieces of content that you want to be posted in that group. You're going to see the group uh, organic groups thing here. And uh, I had done this before, so it's already enabled, but you're gonna want standard group posts. Basically, this means that this piece of content can be posted into the group as um, a item in the group. You can also, it'll by default, it'll be, may not be posted in the group. So you're gonna wanna change that to standard group post. Save it when you're done. I've also done the same thing for story. So let's go ahead and create a couple of groups. So what I'm creating here are group homepages. I'm gonna call it just group one. Uh, this is where you can put in a description and stuff if you want. And I'm just going to save that. And so here's my group. I'm going to go back and create another group just so I have a couple so you can see what they are doing here. And this will be group two. And so now what I'm going to do is, oh, that's funny. My theme changed. Wonderful. Uh, anyway, so I've got my two groups. So let's go into group one. And something that you're going to want to enable is a sidebar block for organic groups. It makes it a lot easier to manage. It's the group details sidebar block. If you enable it, this block will only show up on group homepages, which is a good thing. And uh, you can also have some other blocks here, group admins, members, stuff like that. But that block is this section right here. It has the group name. It has a bunch of management type functions for the group, including content creation. Now, Something I want you to notice, when I roll over create page, this isn't the same as just the standard node add page uh, URL. Look down in the menu bar and notice that GIDS equals five. This instantly, when I create this, click this link, it's going to automatically post whatever, I, uh, whatever page I create here into this group. So let's click it. And what you're gonna notice here is that my audience for that group, this audience is which group are you gonna post this in, is automatically checked. Uh, so by linking from the group sidebar uh, menu within the group, it's going to automatically do that. Now I can change it if I want to or add it to both groups, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to post it in this group, and I'm going to post a test page and save it. And what you'll notice now if I go back to my group is this test page has now been added to my group. Let me edit my group homepage just a little bit uh, so you can see what the description is going to look like. And you can kind of tell what's going on then. So if I add my group description there and I save it, you'll see that what I've really got on my group homepage is my title, my description, and then my post below it. So let's add a story post to this. And I'm going to just go ahead and it's going to be posted in group one again. And so if I go back to my group, you'll now see that that story post is added on the top. Again, this is functioning just like a blog. So this top section is going to remain the same, and then all your new posts are going to be posted here. Now, just a note, if we go to our group two, there are no posts in this group. So uh, all of our posts are going into group one. So let's go back to group one, and we've got our two posts here. Now, by default, this is how organic groups works. It just creates sort of a blog. They call it River of News style posting here. And what if I want this to be a lot more custom? I want my story posts separated from my page posts, or I want custom layout or stuff like that. 
That's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, in your theme, you're going to uh, duplicate your node.tpl and you're going to create a node uh, template just for your group node. So I'm going to create node.tpl or node-group.tpl.php and I'm going to open that. There's my old stuff that I'm about to do and I'm going to save it. So what I'm going to want to actually do here is by default this is I sort of screwed this up from my testing earlier um, but it looked something like this originally so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna replace my content stuff with a couple of views so if I save this and I clear my cache these posts here should go away and they have and actually my description has gone away too but uh, you can bring that back by by uh, some custom theming. But what I'm going to show you how to do is list those into some groups. This is very similar to the taxonomy stuff that we were doing earlier uh, in an earlier screencast about customizing your taxonomy pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a new view and this view is going to be two blocks. One showing stories, one showing pages just for my group. So um, I'm just going to call it OG blocks. It's going to be a node view. And in this I'm going to create an argument. Uh, actually, let me create a block first. And uh, in here, I'm going to add an argument. My organic group argument for this one that says post right here. And I'm just going to save that argument. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this block right here. This first one is just going to show pages. So I'm going to do a filter here that is type. And it's a page. I'm going to override this so it's not my default. And I'm going to call this my page block. Now, what I've done here so far is I've set up my view to show just pages, and then it's also going to use the argument for the group, so it'll only show pages added to that group. Now, let's do the same thing, but instead we're going to do it uh, for stories. And I'll call this my story block. So when I save this, what I've got here is I've got two blocks. I've got the first one that is just going to show pages and it's going to use the argument for uh, the organic group that's in it. And then I've got one that's story and it's going to use that same argument. So now if I go back to my node template and I embed these two views, I got to put in my view name and then I want block one and then my argument is going to be my node ID for embedding my view. And just to identify this, I'm just going to put page nodes above it. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my story nodes. But I'm going to call the second block instead of the first one because that's my block filtering story nodes. So now if I go back to my group and I clear my caches and they're not showing up because I haven't added any fields yet. So let's go back to my view and add a field. Uh, let's just add the title. We'll make it a link. Obviously, you're going to go way beyond this when you actually do this. I'm just trying to show you a quick example here. So now if I go back to my group, you'll see that my page nodes and my story nodes are now listed. Um, and we could float these and we could design them and we could do all kinds of stuff. But the cool part is, now you're going to notice if I go back to uh, my group 2, those nodes are not listed. Uh, because it's using that argument to only show nodes from that group very rudimentary example here but what you can see is that uh, using views and embedding these blocks we can go crazy we can uh, separate all our node types we can do whatever we want using these views blocks in a very similar way um, to the taxonomy pages that we did uh, a couple of weeks ago on the podcast so hopefully this is a good introduction to organic groups i just covered a whole lot of stuff in just a few minutes so hopefully it made sense Organic groups in general is a way to group nodes, uh, allow people, uh, users on your site to subscribe to those groups of nodes and to be notified every time they're added or updated to the site. Uh, if you have questions on this, jump over to mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast. Don't forget to check out my audio podcast over at geeksandgod.com. That is it. We'll see you next time on the Mustard Seed Media video podcast.